Hi, everyone. Welcome to A Word with Kelly Scott Reed. We're here with Beth Mulcahy, the author of the chat book that just came out. Gosh, Beth, when was it? A couple months ago? Um, <laughs> a month it, ago? Um, about um, a month ago, early April. A month ago. Firmer ground. Beth, welcome back to A Word. It's always awesome to see you. Thank you. It's great to be I'm, here. Thank you for having me. It is absolutely a wonderful body of work. I absolutely, we, we were talking previously with Tiffany, the editor of the Rafanya uh, Press, and we were talking about the growth of the work, the depth of the work. How did you come to bring this collection together? How was it that you chose the work to put together in this chat book? Um, okay, well, yes, that is a very good question. So if, as you both know, I have been writing a lot over the last couple of years, sm smaller pieces, lots of poetry, some shorter creative nonfiction memoir type, I love borrowed form. Um, and I do a lot of different like generative workshops and classes. I really love that to learn, you know, how to be better and do new things. Um, and writing has just become such a passion that just feeds my soul so much in the last few years. It was something I, I did a lot previously when I was in high school and college and really got away from, and I'm just thrilled to be back at it. Um, and I think what, what really prompted this book was that I, I wanted to have a book out there. Um, you know, I started just wanting to see if I could get pieces published and grow as a writer. And then I got to the point where it just became a goal um, that mm -hmm. I set um, the year before um, last was to have, I said, you know what, I'm going to do this year. I'm going to have, I'm going to get a book out there. Um, and so then it was sort of like, okay, well, where do I begin? Um, what, what is going to go into this? And you know, what is the theme? What is the order? What do I want to say? And so I had, I did consult someone and I got a lot of help from <laughs> Megan McVicker and Megan is, so I belong to a few different writing groups um, locally. The one that I work with pretty much every week um, is through our local arts center called the Wayne Center for the Arts um, in Worcester, Ohio. And it's all virtual. So anybody can join this writer's circle. Here I am putting in a plug for people, <laughs> if you want, this is such a great group of supportive writers and lots of the folks are from the area, but not all um, because it does meet virtually. Anybody can join. We meet Wednesday evenings for an hour and it is both generative and we also do workshop each other's pieces, extremely supportive group. So one day I asked the group, does anybody know of some sort of publishing consultant I sort of, what I really want here is I want help putting a book together. I want somebody who's like a museum curator who can help me figure out what pieces to put on the wall in what order, right? And um, the teacher, Megan said, you know, I actually do that. That is something I do. I'm a publishing consultant. And she used to literally work in a museum as a curator. So, and she's a poet, she loves poetry. So this was absolutely perfect. I didn't know that she did this but she's a wonderful teacher and wonderful friend. And so what I said to her, to be quite honest, was, listen, I would just really love to hire you to do this. Like, here's my poetry, I'm in it, right? And mm -hmm. it's raw and it's emotional and I'm not objective about it. Like, it's just my stuff that I'm in. And and I, can you just like look at it and figure out which pieces to put together in what order for a book? And she said, no, I would love to help you put your book together and we'll do that <laughs> together. But this is your book and you're going to do, I mean, she said it much more sweetly than that. And then she proceeded to work with me over a few months and give me wonderful homework, you know, exercises to do with my work um, to help me figure out what felt like an impossible task um, with how to put put this together and present it to the world. And one of the first things that she asked me, which I thought was brilliant, was she said, pretend that you are in preschool and we're all sitting in a circle and you go around, everybody has to go around and gets to say one thing. 
what is your one thing? Like, what do you want to say to the world with your book? And I just thought, you know, so of course you're picturing little kids in preschool, you know, what do you want to say? What do you want to say? I, I have a fish named Stuart, you know, whatever it is um, <laughs> you're saying, right? So that was really, that was really cool thing to think about. And I think that it's just going through that process with her and then, you know, let's print out all your poems and put them in the order in which you wrote them and go through with a pen and a highlighter and circle themes and highlight and what jumps out and and let's figure out you know what is the story we want to tell what is this about for you um and all of that was just it was really cool to do it worked because I think part of what I loved about it was how all it, it pieced together they weren't I wouldn't say your, the work was like, oh, this would follow this. But there was definitely an intense flow that sucks you in and you're on the ride. It wasn't a book I picked up and then put down. It was one that I read from beginning to end. Oh, good. I took the time. I actually gave, gave it to my dad because of the themes involved. And he's a, a poet. <laughs> I oh, do poet. Cool. Yeah. But he, 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 t- t- my dad is amazing. And he's of Irish descent, very proudly. Um, and I was like, hmm, I think you might like this. Um, and, and he absolutely loves it. So um, I thank you for the honesty in your writing. Um, I think that for me, it's very hard to bear myself for real. Like I'll put themes and stuff, but it's always in someone else's voice. Um, but yours, your voice in particular came through, no matter what you were writing about. You weren't taking on a, a character. I felt, I felt it was really great. Um, Firmer Ground, how did you come to that, that title? Titles are so important, right? It's, it's the first thing on the cover. How did you come to your title? Yeah, so, so that is part of, of the thing that I thought of that I wanted to say to the world, um, which is as, as Pollyanna as it, as it may sound in a soundbite, um, just this idea that everybody goes through really difficult things and um that's part of being human and everybody's coming from a different place and and has different difficulties and hardships and places that they come from and and things that they experience uh and it's shaky like ground just gets shaky in different ways for us at different times and what i what i want to say here is that um it is possible to find your way to firmer ground we all have that ability in us to, to take ourselves somewhere better, wherever it is that we need to be, however we need to get through. We have resilience, we have resolve. Um, th- that idea I draw on a lot from, uh, I'm sort of obsessed with researching my maternal ancestry, right? Mm. And, um, and looking at the stories of the lives of the women that, um, from whom I come, you know, somebody raised somebody who raised somebody who raised me and they did it in certain ways and they did it with certain life experiences. And, and you think about the things that our ancestors went through as far as wars and, and famines and, and just, and then the individual things, if there was emigration, um, if there was death of spouses and poverty. And I love to think about the idea that there is inside me, this ability to be strong and to persevere and to find firmer ground. Well, in your research um, for the, for the book as well, and just in life, was there anything that surprised you? Did you have any surprises in your that you didn't realize um, that happened to your ancestors, or that they were like? Um. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think if there was, I think there was a lot of, of big surprises to me because it was almost like it was all new. Um, and how it started was that I read a book by an author called Connie Schultz. Now, Connie Schultz is um, from the Cleveland area in Ohio, and she's married to Senator Sherrod Brown, who's a senator from Ohio. And she is a, a brilliant writer. She was a journalist for a long time with the um, Cleveland Plain Dealer. She teaches writing at Kent State University, and she wrote her debut novel. During, it came out during COVID. And it's called The Daughters of Erie Town. And when I read that, and it's a, it's a novel, so it's fiction, but it is about her. 
maternal ancestors' lives. And it's about her, her, her mother and her grandmother. And it really just examines this concept of what we inherit, life experience, mm-hmm. um, and everything that they, these women went through and what they passed on. And it really made me think about my grandma and her life. And Mm -hmm. it made me want to know what of her is in me. Um, What was she like? What did, what, you know, how are we the same? How are we different? I only got to be with her until I was 10 when she passed away. Uh, We were very close though. And I spent a lot of time with her. And, um, and so I, I wanted to like, I wanted to jump on the internet, to be honest, Kelly and Google her. <laughs> There's nothing, nothing. <laughs> There's nothing. And this, this actually really was just kind of struck me like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm bringing her back to life right now because I want to. So I started to interview everybody who knew her that was still alive. Um, and there, there were, there were things that you, they don't, you don't tell children, right. That people mm-hmm. go through. Um, that now that I was able to find out about like difficulties. So I didn't realize she lost her mother and her husband in the same year when she was um, in her sixties. And uh, you know, she, I I either had forgotten or didn't remember that she was a breast cancer survivor Um, that she emigrated to the United States when she was only nine years old, that her uh, from Scotland and that her father, she was the youngest of nine children. I'm the youngest. And so I think a lot about that, what's that like being born into a family structure and dynamic that already is up and running and exists and you have to find your way in it Um, and her to a much larger degree. But the significant thing that happened to her too is that she never knew her father because he died with the year she was born um, and left her mother widowed with nine children between the ages of, you know, one and 17. And that ended up having a lot to do with why I'm in America, you know, because they came over. Um, Mm -hmm. because the breadwinner of the family died and they needed opportunities. And, and I still have family in Scotland and I went recently, um, and reconnected with that family that my grandmother's generation was very closely connected to the family back home. And it just faded over the years. And that was very meaningful to me. And my next, my next chapbook, I've decided it's going to be all around that trip. So I, I took a, like an epic two week trip by myself to Scotland last summer. And I remember seeing the picture. Yeah. I remember being like, oh my gosh, how incredible. What a, it what was, a door that opened. Yeah. Please keep it going. I just super meaningful. And I've, yeah, surprises. I've learned so much about the family and how strong the connection was and just the wonderful relatives that I have that live over there that welcomes me with open arms. And, and there is a very emotional trip, the leading up to it during, and then coming home. um, And I have a lot of writing around it that I'm excited to put together and share. I can't wait to read that because that's another thing. My, we did the same thing. My father, my entire family, including my parents and my kids went to Ireland to see our relatives that we had, known and kept in contact loosely with throughout the years. Um, but learning about the wall that was built, um, by my great grandfather when he was 19 to come to America, he could only come to America once the wall was built. So you see this beautiful wall and then it just crumbles at the end. Cause he was in such a hurry to get um, to it. So we that's to a poem that. right there. Yeah, Kelly. This is so cool. Like, um, and, and you do feel a connection. You don't, realize you're going to feel that connection until you're there. I never wanted to leave. I was like, Oh, here are the people I relate to. It was a very interesting trip. I can't wait to read about yours. I think that's going to be great. Very excited. Um, I got sucked into your story and I forgot my next question. Um, well, let me think on it. Hold on. I'll edit this part out. (laughs) I'm sitting (laughs) thinking about my question that I just, my brain is fried. So, uh, you put, what has been the reception of the family? Did you, did you, they must've been like your family, your extended family. What was the reaction like to your firmer ground chat book? It's been wonderful. My family has been so supportive, both my husband and kids. I have really creative kids. Um, who are into music and art and writing and drawing. And we are all very supportive of um, each other's creative endeavors, which is really lovely. Um, And 
so that's been great. And then I just, I have a really large extended family because, you know, we're Irish, right? Um, so <laughs> lots and lots of aunts and uncles and cousins and my siblings and um, everybody has been just really supportive. In fact, my sister-in-law in Chicago who runs a book club made everybody and she bought everybody in her book club a copy of the book, made them read it. And I got to appear um, at their discussion meeting um, the other night, which was so much fun. So oh, that's great. Enjoyed that. And then I had a local um, in-person launch party when the book came out where I invited a lot of family and friends. And um, I was super thrilled that a bunch of um, writers from my local writing circle that I talked about earlier came. I wasn't expecting mm -hmm. Um, all of them to be able to show up on a, you know, it was on a weeknight at a local wine bar and it was an absolute blast and I did a reading. Um, so yeah, it, it's been, it's been really fun. I had, um, I had my, my sweet aunts um, texting me and saying how much they loved it and that they were crying. And then I was sort of like, oh, now I feel bad, but you know. <laughs> Country's supposed no, it's, to be moving, right? So. Yeah, I cry at stuff. Like, I know it's good when I start to tear up. And there were a few times when I teared up because that's, that's the, I don't cry most of the time. What does force it out of me is the written word. So if you're getting that reaction from people who may not be the most demonstrative, I'm not um, in general. Um, so when it, when it touches you and it pulls that out of you, it's a real gift um, yeah. to people like me. <laughs> well, and I will say a lot of my family is a huge inspiration, right? So there's poems about my daughter and my relationship mm -hmm. with her and my mother. And um, yes, I'm, I'm a very much, I'm a person who like, I dream in emotion. I'm, I'm a feeling person. Relationships are very meaningful and important to me. So that is the inspiration for, for a lot of my writing. And then, you know, I use it to work through things. I've always used writing as a way of trying to figure stuff out for myself. Well, Beth, where can we find your book? Where can we find Firmer Grounds? Yeah, you can find it here. Here, we'll show a picture. Yeah, show a picture <laughs> of the of the book. Yeah, so I, I should I want to give props to Anxiety Press out of Chicago, Cody Sexton. Um, you can follow him and the press on Twitter. But the book is available on Amazon. Um, so yeah, and so you can get there through my website, which is bethmulcahywriter.com. Um, and so with that, yeah, Amazon is probably the best best way to get it. Beth, thank you so much for coming on. This has been absolutely awesome. I really appreciate it. You are a wonderful writer and I'm so glad we know you. Thanks thank so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you doing this.